Welcome! In front of me I have OnePlus Nord 2 5G and I'm gonna show you a few tricks you can use on this device. Let's start with the simple one. So, if you like to open the quick panel on your phone by swiping downwards on the screen, simply like that. By default you won't be able to do this on this phone, because when you swipe downwards on the screen you open this page. This page is called Shelf. To open the quick panel by default you need to swipe downwards from the top edge of the screen like this. And we can change it to do it. Press and hold on the free space of on the home screen. So, for example, you can press and hold here or between the icons. Oh, my bad. Like this. When this menu opens, tap on the home settings. And here we have this option called swipe down to access. Let's tap on it. And here we can customize this option. As you can see, we can, for example, disable it and then tap save. If you disable it, nothing will happen when we, when we swipe downwards on the screen. If we enable it and change it to notifications and quick settings instead of shelf and tap save, now we will, we will be able to open the quick panel and notifications quite nicely by swiping downwards on the screen. I prefer this option because it allows us to access the quick panel uh, quite easily like this. Okay. Next a little option or little trick I, I want to show you is also in the um, home settings menu. So let's open it and here we have this option called add icon to home screen. And this option is enabled by default. So basically when, whenever you install new app, the icon for it will appear right here on the home screen. And if you don't want to have a clutter on your home screen, when you, you want to have it clean and only selected icons or no icons at all, you can go to this uh, home settings menu and disable this option and now uh, no icons will appear whenever you install the new app on your phone. Okay, now let's open the settings on our phone like this and in settings scroll down and select the option called convenience tool. And here we have a couple of uh, things I, I want to show you. First one is navigation. Let's tap on it. And here basically we can customize uh, the way we navigate our phone. I have uh, selected gestures and this type of navigation is uh, quite different than the default one or rather the old one. Old one is navigation buttons. Basically you have this uh, bar right here at the bottom and you have uh, buttons right here like back button, uh, home button and recent apps button. I had selected uh, gestures, so this navigation, oh my bad, uh, this type of navigation is quite different because we don't have the buttons at the bottom of the screen and to, for example, go back we need to swipe uh, from the edge of the screen to the middle of the screen like this and then release to go back uh, to open the home. We swipe upwards from the bottom of the screen like this and to open the recents we swipe upwards from the bottom of the screen and hold in the middle for a second or two to open the recent apps. And we can customize also uh, the different types of navigations. For example, for gestures we can uh, enable the option to hide the gesture guide bar. Right here at the bottom we can enable this option and this bar will disappear. We can also disable the uh, vibration on the back navigation. So if you navigate back your phone won't vibrate because by default it does. And we can also disable or enable the option called the mistouch prevention. And basically this option, uh, whenever you are in games, this option, uh, if it's enabled, you will need to swipe more than once uh, to go back, for example, or go to home screen. So uh, it prevents uh, closing your game by mistake, for example. Okay, now let's select the navigation buttons and here all we can customize is basically the layout of the button. We can switch the layout from the uh, back button on the left, home in the middle and recents on the right, or rather, my bad, back button on the right, home in the middle and recents on the left, my bad. And we can switch it to uh, recents on the right, home in the middle and back on the left. 
Okay, let's go back from the uh, navigations to the convenience tools. And next option right here is gestures and motions. And here we can uh, customize a few gestures. For example, we can tap on screen of gestures. And here we have a few more options. First one is double tap to wake. And if you enable this option and your screen is disabled, you can wake it up by double tapping on it like this. The next option is draw an O to open the camera. So basically, if your screen is turned off, you can draw O on the camera or on the screen, turned off screen to open the camera up uh, to quickly access it. And another option there was, uh, what was it? Um, draw V to turn off or turn on or off flashlight. So basically, if the screen is turned off and you draw V on the screen, it will turn on the flashlight or turn it off like this. Okay. We have also music controls right here. Basically, if you enab enable this option, you will be able to control your music. So if you draw a symbol like this on the turned off screen, it will, you will pause your music or play it again. If you draw this symbol, or rather this, you will go back, uh, play previous song. If you draw a symbol like this, you will play the next song. And at the bottom we have option called add gesture and here we can add another gesture. We have a list of gestures right here. For example, we can select draw M and we can assign different actions like unlock the phone, call somebody. So if you select call, you can select the contact from the list to call it. So if I, for example, select this contact, whenever I draw the letter M on the closed screen, it's gonna call this person and we, we can also open the app. So if I select open the app and select, for example, Play Store. Now, whenever I close the screen and draw M on it, it's gonna open the Play Store like this. Okay. Let's go back to uh, gestures and motions. And here we have two more options. Uh, swipe down with fingers to free, free fingers to take a screenshot. If you enable this option, you will be able to take a screenshot on your phone by swiping down on the screen with three fingers on your screen, like this. And next option is touch and hold with three fingers to take a screenshot. And this option is quite uh, similar but different. Basically, if you press and hold on the screen with three fingers, the screen will dim itself and you will have this lighten up area and you can drag it up and down and once you release it, you will take a screenshot only of this area, this lighten up area. So you can basically take the part of the screen or screenshot of the, of the part of the screen, like that. Okay, let's go back to the convenience tools. Next option is called power button. And here basically we can customize a few functions for our power button. First one is double click the power button. So by default, the camera is selected. So if you press the power button twice quickly, you will open the camera up. Oh my butt. Uh, let's close this. So press double power button twice quickly, like this. As you can see, it opens the camera, but you can disable it if you select the NA option and then nothing will happen if you press the uh, power button twice. Okay, next is press and hold power button and by default the power menu is selected. So if you press and hold the power button, it will open this menu and here we can reset, restart our phone, turn it off or use the emergency option. But you can also select the uh, voice assistant by Google. So if you change it to voice assistant, now when you press and hold the power button, it will enable the voice assistant like this. Okay. Next option is screenshot. And here we have uh, options like we had before. So free finger swipe down, free finger touch and hold Th these options for the screenshots. But we have also power and volume down buttons and we can enable and disable these options. So for example, uh, if you have a like problem with taking screenshots by mistake, because I do often I take a screenshot on my phone by mistake by just simply pressing the uh, power button and volume down button together uh, and it takes the screenshot and you know, it, sometimes it happens by mistake. You can disable the option called power and volume down buttons and you won't be able to take a screenshot by pressing the power and volume down. And I, I, I really like this option because I really tend to 
take a screenshot by mistake this way. Okay. Uh, below we have delete original image and after editing, this option, uh, basically if you edit the screenshot and save it, the original one will be deleted if this option is enabled. Uh, and last option, or rather not last, but second last option right here is screenshot sound, and we can enable it and disable it. So basically if you disable this option, whenever you take a screenshot there won't be a sound, by default there is one this. And last option is preview window location. And here we can switch it to right or left, depending what you like. If you switch it to right, whenever you take a screenshot, this window will be on the right. If you switch it to left, it's gonna be on the left. Okay, let's go back. And last option in convenience tools is quick launch. Let's tap on it. And this option allows you to open apps uh, quickly by using the uh, fingerprint sensor. Of course, you need to have a uh, set up a fingerprint protection on your phone to use this feature. But if you do, you can enable this option by tapping this switch right here. And we can edit this menu right here. So it can tap on edit. And here we can, for example, assign the functions to these buttons. So let's say I want to... Um, hmm. open the search page on YouTube, right? I can remove the uh, function from uh, here, from this list, one, one. Let's tap on minus to remove it like this. And now let's tap on the search button to assign it right here. Then uh, also we can assign the apps. So for example, you can op open apps with this function. So let's remove incognito from here by tapping on the minus, go to apps right here. And let's say I want to open quickly something like uh, Netflix, right? Now, once you're done editing this um, quick launch menu, tap on check mark to save it. And when you turn off the screen on your phone, press and hold on the uh, fingerprint sensor, this menu will appear. And here we can drag our finger, for example, to the YouTube search and then release it to open the search for on YouTube, as you can see. Or we can uh, open the apps that way also. So press and hold on the fingerprint sensor. This menu will appear and we can open the apps like Netflix by dragging to them and releasing the finger. Okay, let's go back to settings. And now let's go back to the main page of settings. And here, scroll down, find the option called notifications and status bar and tap on status icons. Right here we can customize the status bar, basically icons on it. As you can see now we have the Wi-Fi icon, battery icon, and if we enable something like, uh, for example, do not disturb, um, Bluetooth, NFC, um, that should be enough. Basically you will have more icons right here. And if you enable every feature on the phone, it's gonna be quite a lot of them. But we can customize this. We can basically remove the icons from this status bar. As you can see here, we have a list of features. And if I, for example, disable the in NFC right here by tapping the switch, the NFC will disappear from this status bar and won't be visible. So only way to tell if the NFC is enabled, you need to open the quick panel and see right here. And we can also dis disable the Wi-Fi, mobile network, uh, battery, alarm, and play mode, smart screencast, earbuds, do not disturb, VPN, and many, many more options. Basically, you can enable or disable whatever you want right here on this list. This is quite a uh, nice feature, honestly, that you don't have on most phones. Okay, let's go back. And one last thing I want to show you is a it's called split screen. So basically we can use two apps at the same time. To open the app in the split screen mode, we need to open it first by tapping on the icon, for example, so it's open the Chrome. And now we want to, let's say, open it in split screen with different, different app. To do it, go to the recent apps menu. In the recent apps menu, press and hold on the app 
uh, you want to open in split screen mode. This menu should open and tap on the split screen. As you can see, Google uh, opened right here and moved to the top of the screen. And now we can select different app to open in the split screen mode. We can do it from the recent apps menu, or we can tap on the free space right here around this app to go to the home screen. And here we can open uh, app menu, for example, and open different app. Uh, be aware that not every app supports the split screen mode. So for example, if I open messages, I'm pretty sure, oh no, messages work. Um, I'm surprised actually, um, but some of them won't work in split screen mode uh, and you won't be able to do. So I'm pretty sure camera won't work, right? Yeah, camera won't work in split screen mode, as you can see. So not every app supports the split screen mode. But once you select the second app, for example, messages, as you can see, we have two apps at the same time on the screen and we can use them. For example, we can tap OK here, right? We can open the menus, we can scroll through the Google. So if you want to, for example, o open YouTube and watch some YouTube videos and on the same time doing something else, you can do that if you like. You can also resize the windows for the apps. So if let's say I want uh, Chrome to take more space on the screen, you can press and hold on this bar right here and move it lower on the screen like that to resize it like this. You can also move it move it higher to uh, resize it uh, the bottom up like this. And to close the split screen mode, you simply need to grab this bar and drag it to the top of the screen or the bottom of the screen, depending on which app you want to close like that. And that should be all. Thank you for watching. If you found this video helpful, please consider subscribing to our channel and leaving the like on the video.